Before becoming a software developer, programmer, software engineer, or whatever you'd like to call it, there are a couple of soft skills, as I have come to realize in my journey, that will come in handy prior to getting started with writing code. Obviously, there's much more to landing a job in software than these five skills, but they will definitely give you a major boost along the way. Just a disclaimer, I've been programming for about seven months now, so I'm by no means an expert. Still, I was lucky enough to have most of these skills before starting out, which is why I'm making this video for you guys who may not have or know about these skills. Hi, I'm Victor, and today on Height Above Sea Level, I'm going to tell you about five soft skills to have before becoming a programmer. Starting off at number five is touch typing. For those of you who don't know, touch typing is the act of typing without looking at the keyboard. Touch typing utilizes what's known as a home row where eight of your fingers will be placed. For your left hand, your fingers go on the F, D, S, and A keys with your index finger on F, and on your right hand, your fingers go on the J, K, L, and the colon symbol. If you've ever wondered what those little bumps are on the J and F key, those are for people who touch type to find the home row. Since these are where your index fingers are placed, you can use the bumps to reposition your fingers back on the home row after typing letters in other rows, hence the name, touch typing. At the end of the day, writing code is still writing and you still use characters and words from regular English. For this reason, being able to type without looking at the keyboard has a couple of advantages. One, it improves your speed so you not only can write code faster, but you're also more productive overall and accomplish more throughout the day. Now we don't necessarily need to type 100 words per minute to accomplish this, but touch typing can definitely help you improve your coding experience. Two, it can also help reduce the strain on your neck since you don't always have to keep switching focus between the keyboard and monitor. As a programmer, you'll probably be sitting down for long hours and these little movements can add up, resulting in stiffness in the neck area. Worse still, it could even lead to an unnecessary trip to the chiropractor when taken to an extreme. You don't want that and I certainly don't want that for you. With touch typing, you can stay focused on the monitor, therefore eliminate these little movements and overall improve your posture for those many hours you'll spend working on projects. Granted, you can still achieve faster typing speeds by memorizing where the keys are on the keyboard, however, that would take a really long time and way more effort than you would need to write code. That's why I suggest touch typing. It's an already established way of typing that almost anyone can teach themselves. There are tons of free online resources you can use to learn how to touch type. The program I used is called Type Faster. This is just one example. There are others like Just Type, Keyblaze, and Typing Club. It's really up to you on which one you want to use. Just make sure to do your due diligence before downloading any of them to be on the safe side. At number four is editing slash proofreading. Just like when writing regular English, you'll make errors when writing code. In order for your code to work, it has to have the right syntax. This is where editing and proofreading come in. And like regular English, a simple typo in your code will result in an error and the application you're working on won't work. And as much as typos are a small thing, eventually, they can get quite cumbersome as you go along. You will not believe how many silly errors you'll make, especially as a beginner programmer, just because you forgot to add a semicolon at the end of your statement or didn't use a closing curly brace. In extreme cases, you can even spend hours debugging your code just to find out one word was misspelled. Trust me, it happens. One of the ways to reduce silly mistakes in your code is touch typing. With your eyes always on the monitor, you can see the errors as you type them and make the correction right away instead of compiling the application, getting an error, then going back to the code frustrated why nothing seems to be working. One more reason to learn touch typing. Another way would be to practice writing articles, stories, and what have you on things you like, then go over them for mistakes. This one might take more time and effort, but it helps you get into the habit of being more conscious of what you're writing, whether it be code or regular English. Even though, for example, IntelliSense exists in things like Visual Studio, which kind of helps out, these are not as effective as, say, Grammarly for regular writing. For this reason, you still have to be on your toes about stray typos in your code. I meant to see an extension that alerts you on this, but maybe one of you watching can develop something in future similar to Grammarly, but for developers to help eliminate silly mistakes in their code. Who knows? You could then sell it, make tons of money, and retire on some beach somewhere in the Bahamas. But if something like this does exist, please leave it in the comments below. At number three is keyboard shortcuts. This is another small thing you learn mostly on your own. Most Udemy courses, YouTube tutorials, or programming articles don't really tell you about the numerous keyboard shortcuts that will save you time as you code. 
Yes, they might give you a few as they're explaining, if at all they're generous enough to do so, but as for the rest, you'll have to find some other way of learning them. Obviously, I can't tell you all the shortcuts in this video because one, I don't know all of them, and two, this video would end up being longer than it needs to be. Still, there are a couple that you might find useful and others you probably already know that are still valuable in coding. The first isn't necessarily a keyboard shortcut, but it's something I was surprised I had never figured out, even after using computers for a long time. Did you know that the backspace key deletes things on the left side of the cursor, but the delete key deletes things on the right side of the cursor? If you did, type noob in the comments below because that's exactly what I am for not figuring that out in so long. For the other noobs like me who didn't know this and don't know where the delete key is, on laptops, it's usually around the top right of the keyboard and for desktop keyboards, it's usually somewhere next to the number pad on the right side of the keyboard. Other shortcuts you'll be using a lot in coding are Alt plus Tab to switch between tabs of open applications, Control plus Tab to switch between tabs in the current application, which will likely be the text editor you're using, Control plus L to go to the browser URL up top, especially when you need to search for something online, or Control plus forward slash to comment out some code, although this one doesn't work everywhere. Some sort of universal shortcuts that will probably still work in whatever text editor you're using include Ctrl plus S to save your work, Ctrl plus C to copy, Ctrl plus X to cut, and Ctrl plus V to paste. Just don't use Ctrl plus C to copy in your terminal because that does something else in there. Speaking of which, the terminal has its own shortcuts that you'll probably have to learn on your own that do something completely different. For example, Pressing the up arrow brings up the last command you entered and you can keep doing this until you get to the first command. Similarly, pressing the down arrow brings you back to the latest command you type until you get back to the empty area for you to type something in. If at all you feel like you perform an action multiple times in your code, for example having to open a new window which includes an extra step of going to the view button up top, you can always shorten this by adding your own custom keyboard shortcuts to the text editor you're using. In addition, you can also view all the current shortcuts available in your current editor by going to help up top then keyboard shortcuts reference if you're using VS Code. If not, just click on the tabs up top and you'll likely see something similar. Should that not work, you can just google what the shortcuts are for that particular text editor. Another nice thing many text editors have is showing the shortcut next to what you want to do after clicking one of the options in the navbar up top. Moving on to number 2 is researching. Regardless of what language you choose to learn, you won't cover everything that language has to offer. At least not at first. Heck, you might never even get around to seeing everything that language has in store. Even if you did, you wouldn't be able to remember it all because there'd be too much to recall. Software and programming languages are always changing, so it's always good to stay abreast of what's going on in whatever framework you're using. Even though research helps with this, the area in which it really shines is when we're looking for help. You're not the first programmer to need help, and you surely won't be the last. I'm sure you've heard by now how software developers are always googling things. Even though googling problems may seem like something a professional shouldn't do, Google actually has a lot of resources to help you out when you get stuck. The beauty of software is if you make a mistake, it's not the end of the world. If you're in the emergency room and saw the doctor google how to do open heart surgery, then that will literally be the end of the world, at least for you. However, with coding, you can google an error you get when trying to work on an application and see if others had that same error and what they did to solve it. Even if you know what you're doing, there are some errors that will pop up you will not be familiar with. This is where research comes in. Sometimes you might have to look harder for a solution, but if you know how to do it, you'll always find a way. There are many people out there with different opinions and different things, but a good place to start when you get stuck is on Stack Overflow or Free Code Camp. Many developers use these sites already, so you should be able to get some valuable information whenever you visit them. The other reason you'll be searching things up is that sometimes there's just too much to remember. For example, maybe there's a method you know that works at a certain point in your code and you simply forgot the name, or you're not sure if something you can do in one programming language is possible in another. Regardless of your reason for doing some research, you should never feel embarrassed for googling stuff when coding. You shouldn't even feel bad for using Google in the first place because how else are you supposed to search for things? Bing? Just kidding. I'm sure it gets similar results despite the search engine you use. An alternative resource would be joining Discord servers where you can interact with other developers and bounce ideas and questions off of each other, something I would highly recommend. Either way, knowing how to get the information and where to get the information will be pivotal in helping you become a better programmer. Finally at number 1 is creativity. This is somehow another word for what many developers call a problem solving mindset. As a developer, you'll be given problems and asked to solve them. How you solve them is completely up to you. Different developers will probably have different ways of going about things. 
And as much as it's always good to follow best practices, at the end of the day, you have to come up with a solution to the problem yourself, and this requires creativity. But how do you learn how to be creative? Is there a specific class you can take to improve on your creativity? Do you have to be an artist to be creative? The answer to these questions are, creativity is something you gain through experience. No, there's no specific class you can take to be creative. And no, artists aren't the only creative people in the world. You can go to school, but you can't teach creativity. I believe creativity comes from the willingness to try something new and fail. It's a combination of all the experiences you've had until now that allow you to see things from a different perspective than others. This is what thinking outside the box means. You don't know what's outside the box, but you're willing to explore it and you're willing to fail when exploring what's outside the box. And when you do fail, you're still willing to explore what's outside the box again, this time with the experience you gained from the first time. Doing this over and over opens up your mind to different parts you would have never seen had you not explored what's outside the box or given up the first time you failed. You're going to fail a lot in your programming journey, but you'll need to take that as experience that will open your eyes and force you to try a different approach. That's coding in a nutshell. You have to be willing to think outside the box to get to the solution. And the fact that you have to come up with this solution is creativity in and of itself. For this particular skill, all I can say is fail as much as you can, as often as you can. Only then will you know which path to take and which ones go nowhere. But that's all I had for you guys. Are there any other skills you think would be helpful for someone thinking of working in software? Let me know in the comments below. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitch if you want to talk more about programming or just hang out. I use Twitter every day, so if you want to holler at me directly, that would be a good place as well. If none of these work for you, I have a Discord server you're more than welcome to join. All links are in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, from me to you, deuces.